So we, let me just begin with this. There's a story that I heard when I was very young, and I cannot forget the story. I don't know why. I love it so much. A preacher said or told us this story about a poor widow that had only one daughter. She struggled with the daughter, the daughter, the daughter a lot, and by God's grace, she got an opportunity to travel abroad. Things begin to get well with the daughter, and the daughter never forget about the mother. She begins to find way to see how best she can help the mother. She begins by sending money to the mother, but the money could, the money could not reach the mother. You know, in those days, not like now that we have a lot of technologies and you communicate easily and whatever have you, except somebody is going, especially we in Africa and some part of rear areas, uh, except somebody is going, you cannot get a message across. Or you write a letter, it takes a lot of months before your letter could reach. So the communication was not that uh, fast. And so she sent money, the mother could not get money. So she developed an idea to send something that is not valuable and see if that could work. So what she did was she prepared bread. And somebody was going, she gave the bread, saying, when you go give this bread to my mom, Fortunately, the bread reached. When she sent money, the money cannot reach. But when she sent the bread, the bread reached. So she was very happy that she, now she can find a means to get to the mother. Amen. Now, here is it. The mother also is there getting angry that other people's children are overseas or abroad, and they send good things to their parents. And you have struggled all the years with you, and if you are overseas, and you are sending me something, I expected something good. Then you send me bread. So she got mad with that and she gave the bread to another poor widow in a community. And the widow ate the bread. So now that the daughter has found the means that she can be able to use to send things to the mother, she decided that this time around, she will put the money in the bread. She packaged the money in the bread and sent the bread to the mother. The mother received the bread. In anger, she also gave the bread to the other woman. So anytime she sent the bread to the mother, the mother will get angry with that, and she will just take the bread and dash it to another person. She didn't care to open it one day to know what is in it because it is bread. Amen. Amen. So after some time, this woman that continued to receive the bread made maximum use of the money. She transformed her life. She changed her life, built some buildings, and began to establish businesses, and she was now doing well. She was angry and jealous with the neighbor. What she is doing that she is being able to do that, and she have a daughter overseas, and she cannot do it. Not to waste your time. After many years, the daughter came back home. When she came back home, she saw the deplorable condition that the mom was in. So she asked the mom, why are you in this condition still? You're not supposed to be in this condition. And the mom got angry and said, other people's children send them good things. You travel abroad. The only thing you can send me is bread. The daughter asked, so mom, did you receive the bread? You say, yes, I did receive all the bread that you sent to me, but that is bread. I could afford to buy bread, so I never cared to eat that nonsense bread. Anytime you send the bread, I took the bread and gave it out because I don't need your bread. I need something good from you because I suffer a lot with you. The daughter got angry in the spirit. And she recounted the total money that she had put in the bread and sent it to the mom. When she mentioned the money to the mom, the mom passed out. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. When she came to herself, she got angry and ran to the neighbor and said to the neighbor, how wicked are you? 
So you knew that the bread that had been given to you had money in it, and you never told me a day. Then the neighbor said, you did not have value what you had. You never care one day to even open it or to cut a piece. You will have discovered what was in the bread. But every day you gave the bread out because it is bread. Nothing she could do. It is already gone. <laughs> Many Christians behave just as this poor widow. Many Christians behave just as this poor widow. But I have come to tell you this afternoon that the word is not just the word, but what is in it for you. The word and what is in it for you. John recounted from John chapter 1, he said, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And without him was anything made that had been made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness. And the darkness apprehended it not. There came a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for witness, that he might bear witness of the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came that he might bear witness of the light. That is the word. There was the true light, even the light which lighted every man coming into the world. He was in the world. And the world was made through him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and they that were his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he the right to become children of God. Even to them that believe on his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh. God has packaged something precious and gave it to his sons and daughters, his children, knowing their needs, knowing what they are going through in life. God has packaged this into his word, and he has sent his word into us. But the world don't need the word. Because they look at it as it is just the word. But I have come to let you know that don't just look at it as a test. It is not just the word, but what is in it yes. for you. Yes. He was, he is, and he shall be forever. He said in the beginning he was. And everything that was made was made through him. That is the word. The word was created by the word. The Bible says in the beginning God created heaven and earth and the spirit of God moves over the firmament and there was nothing tangible. For things to become reality, the Bible says God spoke the word. Let there be light. And there was light. That is the word. And everything the Bible says God created through the word, nothing was made without him. That is the word. So the word that we're talking about, the Bible says he came into the world. So who is the word? Jesus yes. is the word. Then Jesus is the word, and the Bible says he and his father are one. So the word is not just the word, but the word is God. So when you speak the word, you speak God. When you speak the word, you're talking about the word, you're talking about Jesus. Whenever you talk about the word, you talk about the Holy Spirit. We're talking about the power of God. That is the word. 
Many a times we believers, we just read it, but we don't possess it. Some of us, we possess it, but we don't know the usage. So we have the word, but we don't know the value of the word. And so we go around crying foul. We go around explaining problems and situations to people, calling for prayers and prayer nights and all sort of things while we have the word. Amen. People of God, many times we don't know what is near us, the value of what is near us until someone comes from behind and steal it. We have powerful men of God that speak the word here, but sometimes we don't even check the word. Church business has become formality. People just go there for some formalities. People, some people go to church for food. It's not strange. In the Bible, people were behind Jesus for food. People come here for fellowship because they are alone in that big house. So at least when they come here, they find a little comfort, but not the word. Sometimes some people don't receive hug throughout the week. So when we come here Sunday, at least we receive about 50 hugs. That is good. Somebody hug you. It's good. So sometimes that alone makes somebody to come to church. It's part of the church. Part of the word. Don't be jealous when somebody come and steal the word. The Bible says one time Jesus Christ was passing and the multitude crowded on him and people were... Touching him and pushing him. Many people were touching Jesus for popularity, for news. I was able to touch him. It's like Obama come here when you're able to shake his hand. You are happy that Obama shake your hand. But the Bible says a lady that have an issue of blood knew that he was the word. He knew that this man that is the one that the Bible had been talking about, the prophet has spoken of, John spoke of him. Now if he is passing by, I don't need to explain my problem. I don't need to explain my situation. If I can only take the hem of the word, I shall be made whole. And the Bible says she crept behind the crowd. And people were shopping him here and there, pushing him here and there, pressing on her. But the Bible said that she made her way and touched the hem. That is the word. And the Bible said when she touched the hem, instantly, her issue stand. That is the word. There is power in the word. There's another occasion. The Bible says a centurion had a child that was sick at the point of death. He ran to Jesus. Said, Jesus, you know our relationship. My daughter is dying and need help. Can you please do something about it? Jesus said, don't worry. I know you have been doing well with the church. I know you can contribute a lot to the ministry. So don't worry, I'm going to go with you. Hello? You know what the centurion said? Centurion said to Jesus, you don't have to go. I just want to run through the story so we leave from here. He said, you don't have to go. There is something in you that you can just release and things will change. That is the word. Because even I, common men like me, I have people under me, and when I speak, they do what I ask them to do. So I believe that if you, Jesus, can just send your word, your word will make the impact. Your presence is not necessary. The word. The word. Just speak the word. And the child will be made whole. The word. That is what Jesus said and recommended. Say, in all Israel, I've never seen any man realize any man with such a faith. Jesus is not just talking about faith. But Jesus is talking about the realization of the word. 
if you can realize the power, the anointing, what is incorporated in the world, yeah. then it becomes valuable and useful to you. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says that Jesus in the crowd looked at him and said, since you request not my presence but the word, go, your faith has made your child whole. And the Bible says that when he, he spoke the word, the same time that the word was sent, Jesus and the, the centurion were in different places discussing the child was at the house. The same time, the child got healed. So somebody began to run after the centurion that don't worry about the man again because the child is healed. Now, you know what, 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 what the centurion did? The centurion wanted to make sure if it was the word. So he asked, what time? Because he knew the time that Jesus spoke the word. When they gave the time that the child got healed, they made a comparison and he said, it is not the medication. It is not the doctor's treatment. It is not what the nurses were doing. But it is the word. There is power in the word. The word is not just the word. It carries anointing. There is healing in the word. There is deliverance in the word. There is breakthrough in the word. I don't know what you can think about, but everything is in the word. That is a good package for you. I don't know your problem, but whatever your problem may be, there is solution in the world. Many Christians like the widow, we, we worry about fasting and other stuff, but the word is with us. At one time, the Pharisees were, were telling Jesus, why is it that the disciples of John and others, they fast all the time? And he said to them that, my disciples don't need to fast and worry themselves. Why? Because they are with the bridegroom. And how can somebody be hungry when you are with the bridegroom? There are some of us, and many Christians, we are in the bridegroom, we are in the chamber, and we are dying. Hungry, starving. Why? Because we don't know the person we're with. You can't walk with Jesus and remain the same. You can't walk with God and your life remain the same. If you are still the same after walking with God for many years, check yourself up. Something might be wrong. Maybe you are not in the right place. Maybe you are not making use of the word. But God is able to do it for you. It is in the word. Read it. Possess it, declare it, and have it. It is yours. It is your inheritance as a child of God. The word. Speak it. When situation arises, speak the word. When there is no comfort, speak the word. When the water seems to overflow you, speak. The word. Oh my God, there's one time a lady was sent to the point of death, and the doctor said, You know, Africa, we, we have a lot of problems in Africa. And the doctor said, We don't think you can make it. And she was crying. And I said, That is what the doctor said. But let's see what God says. The doctor said, You cannot make it, you will die. But God is saying that you shall not die, but live to declare the goodness of God. So don't be afraid of what the doctors are saying. What God is saying 
it's what is important. Many a times we listen to the mouth of people and be down. Because people said you cannot make it in life. People say you are nothing, you are nobody, you don't have a degree, you, you, you cannot make it because you, you don't have the foundation. You, you from the poor family and whatever have you. That is not true. That is not what the Bible says. With God, you may be from the dungeon and he can take you and make you what you want you to be. You can come from the remote village and he can make you to become who he wants you to be. That is the God we serve. But these things can happen if you have the word. Let me end right here because of time. You are a brother and Christian in the Lord. God loves you. He cares about you. You are the apple of his eyes. Every time, I always told people that you are, you, 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 you are on God's radar. Every day, the radar is on you. He's watching over you. He's monitoring you. He's making sure that you are well in everything. But you don't know it. Because you don't know the word. As we live from here, you don't even touch Bible. You download all the apps in the world on your phone. But some of us don't have the Bible in our phone. You sit in the bus, you sit everywhere. The first thing you think about is to take your phone. And the first place you go is to go to Twitter, to go to Facebook, to go to all sorts of places, but you don't go to the world. That is why you continue to be frustrated. Because you don't know the world. But with the word, there's no frustration. It may come, but you have a comfort. You have a place. Take the word, brothers, mothers, fathers. Let's take the word. That is all we have. That is all God can do to us. Everything is in the word. Everything. Go home and make use of the word. May God bless you.